Hoops, and they go up against Louisiana left-hander Nick Brown. This kid is lanky X. Yeah, he's tall. He's a guy that looks like he's got a long arm. It's going to come on you. It's going to get on you fast. So as a hitter, that's tough. you got to make a decision early. But we know how good of a lineup we have on the other side for Louisiana. I'm sorry. Should be a lot of fun. Yeah, South Dakota and Louisiana getting us going here. And Brown pops in, strike one to a swinging Brecken Beitler, the shortstop who you just heard. His favorite athlete is Kirby Puckett. And so his favorite team is the Twins. And he just loves baseball. This guy eats and sleeps the sport. 1-1. One, one. On the ground, Brown knocked it down, and Beitler reaches. Hey, we need to break down sooner, though. Break down sooner, right? Break down sooner. Hey, good job, Texas Brecken. Here we go, none down, none down. Big hit from Beitler right there. How exciting it is to get that first one out of the way. That's going to get the nerves out of the way. And now you just got to worry on, worry about base running. He's got the smile. Coach over there calling him Brexy, one of his nicknames, and he's aboard. And we already have, I believe, an equipment malfunction for Sawyer Watkins, the Louisiana catcher. Yeah, no time to wait around. Got to make sure you get that fixed. That's one thing about equipment. Like back, even like all throughout when I played is it's got to fit right. It's got to be perfect to you. And sometimes you don't you're afraid to let somebody else use something because they might mess it up. You know, back in my own illustrious baseball playing career, <laughs> comparable to yours, the catcher's gear was so fun when you're young at that age, <laughs> slapping on all the equipment, knowing how you're going to shed the helmet for a pop up. Sawyer's good to go, and he is presenting strike one to Boston Bryant, the center fielder for South Dakota. His manager, Mike Gorsett, says Boston is the best pure hitter on the team. Packs a pretty large punch at the plate. One one. So we got shadows. We've got a couple left-handed starters. And as you were saying when you were mentioning Chris Sale, I mean this is tough arm slot wise and length wise on hitters. Yeah, we got two good lefties on the bump today. You mentioned the shadows too. That can be something that's really tough and come into play as a hitter. You know, it's almost like the ball is is being thrown to you in the light, and then all of a sudden somebody shut the lights off, and you got to redirect and find that ball again. And so Boston Bryant's going to call for time. <laughs> Nick Brown's 2-2. Two -two. A little roller to third. This is Cole Schecksneider getting the lead runner at second. Nice job of Schecksneider securing that ball, getting it to the chest. Nice feed over to second base. Make sure you get one. Don't worry so much about turning the double play. You always want to get one out first. And he did a great job of that. So this Sioux Falls, South Dakota team came out of the Midwest region. They were the runners up there. They fell in the championship game to Nebraska, a team we saw in this field yesterday. But before that game, you see, they were rolling through their opponents with the pitching staff that we've been raving about. Yeah, and once you get on a good little roll, too, that can be such a momentum builder for a team coming into the Little League World Series. You want to be playing your best baseball during this time. Well, they feel like they can do that very often because of this guy, Gavin Weir, who we introduced you to right off the top. Out in front, two and two. He's going to get a heavy dose of those because we know a lot of the bigger kids and the guys that hit the fastballs well, they try to throw them more of that off speed, see if they can chase. Off speed again, and Brown's got to punch out. And 
Brown, he just did a nice job of going right back with the same pitch, same location, that curveball down in the zone. Just a tough pitch to get the barrel to change speeds. That's what you have to do to fool hitters and did a great job right there. Nick Brown's first pitch is called the strike. It gets to the backstop. And Boston Bryan advances into scoring position. Yeah, I wonder if there was a little cross up there because that's a pitch Watkins usually catches behind the plate there. Might have been a little miscommunication on that one. These shadows, they're, they're tough on anyone. The batter here out of the cleanup spot for South Dakota is their third baseman, Noah Kenzie. Twelve-year-old who smacked the home run in that Midwest regional opener that we just showed you against Iowa. Worked a couple of walks in that game as well. He had the most hits for him in the entire regional. And he's got a man at third now as Brian advances. And we talked about the shadows affecting the hitters, but it might be doing a little bit of the same for Watkins back there behind the plate, especially how hard Brown throws. It may be hard to catch up to those balls sometime and if you're not seeing them until the last second. Two one. And Kenzie dumps it toward left, and South Dakota strikes first. Noah Kenzie delivers. And a great piece of hitting with that off-speed pitch. We see him stay back just enough with the hands, is able to flick him out there on the outer half of that pitch. Does a nice job of just placing that thing in the left field getting himself an RBI, but most importantly, putting a run on the board for South Dakota. I mean, that's one way to do it with the shadows, right? Just slow things down and just focus on contact. Exactly, just put it in play. Don't try to swing too hard, especially if you're not seeing it all the well out of that hand and all the way to home plate. It's a nice swing. So a run in, two outs here in the top of the first, and the batter now for South Dakota, the second baseman. Kaysen Mediger. Take strike two. Grilled cheese is the name for Kaysen. Fouls back. That's a great swing by Kaysen right there. Just fouling that one straight back. He's seeing the ball well. Now it's about getting the barrel on it, trying to extend this inning. <laughs> you heard home plate umpire Colin Campbell asking for the hand delivery back there. Well, this is delivered for strike three, a big punch out for Louisiana lefty Nick Brown. So South Dakota in the top of the first, they get a run. And they have the lead here early on against Louisiana. Just watch that game go final up at Labadee Stadium. We bring it down here to Volunteer Stadium for the third game of the day, a matchup just underway between South Dakota squaring off with Louisiana, Xavier Scruggs, Mike Monaco, Sebastian Salazar is with us as well. And X, this game is underway, but it's been a fun few days here already, and we're going to see some dominant pitching in this one. Oh, yeah, two big lefties going at it on the mound. It's going to be exciting to watch them do their thing as they've been so dominant through the course of the summer. But the big thing for these teams is to get it going early with the with the bats. Get the runs going. That way you afford your, your team an opportunity to go out there, make defensive plays, and shut it down the rest of the way. And South Dakota did exactly that in the top of the first before they send their stud starting pitcher to the mound in Gavin Weir. And here's how they got the run 
just moments ago in the top of the first. It was a leadoff single from the South Dakota shortstop, Brecken Beitler, and a few batters later, Noah Kenzie did a great job for him. Yeah, Kenzie did a great job of just keeping the hands back, being able to put that ball in play. And we talked about the shadows earlier today. It's tough to see, so you got to just put it in play. And now Louisiana has to face this left-handed pitcher, Gavin Weir of this South Dakota squad out of Sioux Falls. You factor in what he did in the district tournament, in the state tournament, and in the regional tournament, he's given up one hit through all of that X. Yeah, it's been so fun watching him do his thing. He's got an explosive fastball, but then also does a great job of locating the off-speed. Talking about a big breaking ball and does a nice job of staying in the strike zone. He knows how to put hitters away. Rack it up all the Ks for South Dakota. He toes the slab as we gear up for the bottom of the first on day two here at the 2021 Little League Baseball World Series. So Sioux Falls, South Dakota on one side, Lafayette, Louisiana on the other, and Louisiana's catcher, Sawyer Watkins, leads things off. You saw the height. He is on the shorter side, and we were actually measuring some of the, the teammates pregame on this Louisiana side to see who was the shortest to stack up with the tallest player here one of two six footers we've got on the Louisiana roster they've got one of them Isaac Boudreau three one is a strike and you see in the top left of your screen you've got the velocity and then the major league baseball conversion as well this is a big arm and a leadoff walk Watkins coaxes that against Weir yeah Gavin Weir is pumping that fastball but it's going to be important for Louisiana to be patient and make sure they allow him to establish throwing strikes before they start getting their swings off Nice job of Watkins making sure that he got the count deep and still got on base. Saw a lot of pitches that at bat. He's aboard for Louisiana's pitcher, Nick Brown, who's just out there in the top of the first and takes strike one. Now Brown is lanky in his own right. A good matchup, a couple of lefties, and Weir snaps off a beauty. That's more of that sidearm slider that we see. A lot of times that can look like it's coming from the first base dugout all the way to the other side of the batter's box. I mean, really, if you want a comparison at the professional level for arm slot and look to it, it has a lot of Chris Sale. Yeah, that's, I immediately thought about him yeah. just the way, but also, you know, the way he's able to have that command too. We haven't seen it early on right now, but of course, there's probably a little bit of nerves, anxiousness, but we see him pop in the mitt, and you can hear it, too. Two, two. Oh, that's a beauty. Whipping across the zone, and it's Weir's first strikeout. Yeah, left on left for Brown. This is going to be tough. You see him grip it. You see him snap it off. You see the movement. And Brown, that's tough because it's starting behind you as a hitter. And then that thing is just curving, slurving all the way back over to the outer half of the plate. That's a nice pitch right there by Gavin Weir. Now faces Landon Kraft, the shortstop for Louisiana. Best athlete on the team, according to his manager, Stephen Menard. But he's facing a guy in Weir who in the regional tournament for South Dakota in the Midwest he had a perfect game and he had a no hitter he was an error away from two perfect games and as a hitter facing somebody that throws much harder than a lot of guys you'll face the focus has got to get the foot down early 
Get the foot down early. Get your barrel out. Try to be as quick as you can. You cannot be long underneath the baseball. You got to be short and compact. And even starting earlier than you think you should start, it's got to be a focus. One two pitch. Cut on and missed. Back to back K's for Weir. That's that slider we see again. It just starts on the in the left hander, left handed batter's box and comes right back over the middle of the plate. That's so hard to time up, even as a right handed hitter. You might see it better than lefties, but it's hard to time up and put good barrel on it. So now Cooper Hawkins, and actually said the key is foot down early for the casual fan out there or the young player who's trying to grasp that and seeing this velocity. How do you do that? Yeah, you just want to be able to pick up, pick up where the release point is from the pitcher. Think about where you see it coming out of the hand and start even before that happens. Get your front foot down. If you do a leg kick or you do a toe tap, whatever it is, get that front foot down before that ball is released. Watkins took off for second, so he's in scoring position. And we'll get a meeting of the minds here of this excellent four-man umpire crew. Not quite sure. Check something. I think we get another look here. I think they were going to check to see if he maybe fouled this off, if he tipped it. Yeah. He sure did. So, of course, would send Watkins back to first. It's a pretty good job getting the foot down early, right? Yeah, no, it is. And I think. You see how he gets the front foot down and then hands go back around the same time. You're almost building that rubber band effect. That way when you do hit the baseball, it releases and that thing is stretched. And once you let that thing go, that ball will fly once connected. And we do see that looks like a foul ball there. adjudicated by Colin Campbell. So Watkins back to first. Now there are two strikes on Cooper Hawkins and Weir deals and it's pulled foul. Yeah, it was a nice job of the umpires getting together make sure they try to get that one right. That can be tough to see a lot of the times. Again these are all volunteer umpires. They do a tremendous job. Yeah, they sure do and they love to be here. They've got to enjoy the atmosphere just like these kids. I know at other Little League events that I've been at in the past, they're swapping pins just like so many. It's a big part of it as well, getting the umpire pin. It's got to be really cool. People have been asking me for pins, and I'm like, I don't really have any pins. I need to start collecting. Yeah, if they have them, we'll take them. <laughs> yeah. We'll get you X's address. <laughs> Well, that's a good job by Hawkins battling here. He's Louisiana's center fielder in the bottom of the first, but Weir comes back, punches out Hawkins, and he strikes out three in a row after the leadoff walk. This game will continue here on ESPN. For those of you on ESPN2, we will step aside. PTI next on ESPN2, this game on ESPN. Fact, Tom Seaver was the best pitcher and leader on the Amazing Mets, the team that won the World Series in 1969. He was nicknamed Tom Terrific, and it fit for one of the greatest pitchers of all time, with over 3,000 strikeouts and 311 wins.
the Tom Seaver bracket has eight teams, including the two squaring off here. The Hank Aaron bracket is the other side. It's a really nice touch for two late legends, X. Yeah, it's so great to see, you know, such great names and great players in their own right to allow them to have this opportunity for these brackets to be named after them. That's special for the kids. You know, you gotta, you gotta take solace in the fact that these brackets mean something behind them. You know, we asked these players so many questions, among them favorite athlete, favorite baseball player, and it was really cool to see some of the old names that, that popped up. Old for these guys, you know, your, your Bo Jacksons. We had a, a Kirby Puckett in this game. I think that tells you a little bit about, you know, their family or friends or whoever it may be that said, hey, check out this player who paid, played back in the day or doing their own research and seeing who they like. That's the great thing about YouTube and all these platforms we have today is you can go back and see all those players do their thing. This is Gunnar Olsen, the right fielder for South Dakota, leading off in the second. His team up 1-0 on Lafayette, Louisiana. His favorite athlete, he says, is David Ortiz's favorite team, the Red Sox. Who was your guy growing up? My guy growing up, Gary Sheffield and Tony Gwynn. Those were my two favorites. A comebacker for Nick Brown for the first down. We welcome in the third member of our team, Sebastian Salazar. What's up? Guys, I got so much respect for the parents from these two teams. You know, we hear a lot of stories of long flights, but these two, they put it in on the ground. So let's start with the folks then from South Dakota. You know, they left South Dakota to go to Indy for regionals, and you're not gonna drive back to South Dakota, so most of them haven't been back home since like August. 120 of them still made the trip all the way across the country. That's about 19 hours of driving. That hardly, hardly compares to what the folks from Louisiana have done, because they had to come up lickety split. It was about a 22 hour drive from Louisiana to get up here. The boys uh, from Lafayette, as they say, are well supported at home too. There's a watch party going on at Walk On Sports Bistro. Of course, Bistro spelled B-I-S-T-R-E-A-U-X, uh, as you would in Louisiana. One of the moms telling me they got 50 lottery tickets and only one speeding ticket for the 22 hours of driving, so they felt like it was a win. <laughs> and they shall remain unnamed. Well done, Sebi. <laughs> But it just reminds you of the dedication and the sacrifice behind the parents and the families to be able to do those things. I look back and I continue to thank my parents for being able to do some of those same things when I was younger and allow me to get to the position that I was able to get to playing baseball professionally. Hayden Gorsett trickles one to first at the six footer Isaac Boudreau. There's two down. And yeah, that's something X just through the years of watching the Little League World Series. You've heard so many stories about coaches, parents who've been away from their jobs for weeks. I mean, Sebi was talking about it and how long these folks have, have been on the road and you're missing camps. There are other children in the family. There's a lot that goes into it. Absolutely. And I think even, even vacations that have been planned for time before, you know, and, and knowing what we went through all of 2020, to be able for them to come out here and support this has to mean the world to both the kids and the families. No doubt. And Easton Riley, the batter here for South Dakota, he gets to experience it very acutely with his father, assistant coach Jeff Riley. Easton, the backstop out of the eighth spot for Sioux Falls. Easy ease waiting on the one two. And Brown dots it on the edge to cap a one, two, three second. Oh, we got a couple of good lefties on display on this Friday night. Here's a guy who's been red hot, Luke, the third baseman. He swings to the first one down the line and right. Could be trouble. It's wide open over there. It drops in. Mm, that's a hit. Gets into the gap. That's going to play shorts. Roussel with his 16th hit, adding to his record total in with a double. Whoa, on the corner, paint, and he's gone. And Prather. Off speed, laced, and Wiltz catches it. And Louisiana is your Little League World Series champion. 
out of River Ridge, East Bank Little League back in 2019. The last time, of course, that we had the Little League Baseball World Series. And you got to go back to 06, 07 to find the last state to go back to back. Uh, Georgia doing it 2006. That, I mean, that's just got to be a great feat to be able to do it once and then come back, do it all over again. That's that's some serious bragging rights as a state for Little League. And this Lafayette Little League program, they had to beat East Bank a couple of times this year to get to this point. And that squad managed by the same team, the same manager that led the 2019 East Bank squad, Scott Frazier. So Stephen Menard, this Louisiana team's manager, he said they're good buddies and bragging rights up for grabs. You got to think about how much confidence that that gives you to know that you're beating a, another little league that's already done it right a, a team that's gone and do did the same thing that you're looking to do in the same year Louisiana looks on here in the bottom of the second down one nothing to South Dakota Isaac Boudreaux the batter and he lost this one foul ground to right Gunnar Olsen makes a fine running play nice job up Olsen be able to be able to range over to that foul ground, getting a great jump. You see the speed getting over there easily secures the catch. It's a nice job out there in right field. Puts up the ball, puts up the arm. I got you. This is grounded to third, and Noah Kenzie retires Eli Clark, and that is economical for Gavin Weir on the ball for South Dakota. Yeah, nice job getting inside on the hands of Clark. Kenzie fielding this ball perfectly, funneling it to the chest and making a nice throw over to first base. That's textbook over there at the hot corner. Remember, they haven't seen a lot of balls in play behind their ace on the hill, who typically is playing up a couple of years. He's typically playing with the 14 and under back in South Dakota. He's quickly ahead of Cole Schecksneider, the third baseman for Louisiana, nothing and two. And even that slider explodes out of Gavin Weir's hand. It's, it's not just the fastball, it's the slider as well. That thing is hard, has good movement side to side. His 0-2, that was heat. Love having the radar gun. Yeah, it's so awesome to see the comparison to Major League. I start looking at the number. I'm like, okay, I can still hit that one. But <laughs> Gavin starts touching that 94, 95 range. I was going to say, what's your cutoff? <laughs> Campbell, you can hear the home plate umpire. He said balls flying all over the place because <laughs> these are not your average foul tips with Gavin on the hill. These are not your average 11, 12 year olds, that's no. for sure. Good manners all around. That's the count. Here's the pitch. Up high. Nice take there by Cole, the guy they call Big Shexy for the last name Shexnider. Weir comes back with a fastball. Six in a row set down. He's got four strikeouts in there, and that was a 12 pitch in. Series on ESPN presented by T Mobile. That was the voice of South Dakota manager Mike Gorsett, a 40 year old who played some college baseball himself in Sioux City, Iowa. 
liking what he saw as his boys from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, got the one nothing lead there in the top of the first. They've got nine one and two coming now in the third, beginning with Bo Kerner, the left fielder, against Nick Brown, Louisiana's lefty. Bo Kerner's got some personality, nicknamed Captain Colonel. He's been goofing around with all the interviews that South Dakota's been doing, but he strikes out here. That's four of them for Nick Brown. Want to play Little League? It's easy. Visit playlittleleague.org and enter your address to find a Little League program near you. Next, what stands out to you so far in these first few innings? I mean, the way that these guys are throwing the baseball, both sides, these guys are canning them up. Brecken Beitler floats it to Aiden LaBeouf, and there's two down. You know, a lot of times you see the harder throwers, you know, lose control a little bit, but these guys are doing a nice job of getting ahead early and that affords you the opportunity to put guys away and, and also get that weak contact early staying in the zone in the beginning of the count is it going to take any more than one run for a team in this one and, and another thing too mike is it keeps the defense on the toes you know you're seeing good defense because these guys are keeping the pace going both sides very well and there's nothing better than that, playing or watching the sport. Sometimes as a hitter, you gotta like slow things down, right? Maybe take a, take a time out, just because you don't want things moving too fast, especially when you have nerves. Boston Bryant chops it to first, Boudreaux doesn't get it there in time. Good wheels from Boston Bryant to get aboard with an infield single. That's why a lot of times we practice PFP's pitching, fielding practice. As soon as that ball's hit the first base, you got to bust over there for your Nick Brown. Looks like he just reacted a tad bit late. But also, you got a great runner in Bryant getting down the line. He smells a hit as soon as that ball's put in play. And it feels like they're going to be hard to come by. So Boston's got one, and now he's got 60 more feet and perhaps more. First to third, standing up. Good hustle, good hustle. And the one thing about Bryant there, is we get this look from the third base side, he doesn't stop running. Look, he rounds second base and he keeps going. He made the turn and decided even before he hit second base that he was coming to third. Now Gavin Weir rolls it to short and landed Kraft. Whoa. He's got an arm at shortstop for Louisiana. That's a nice little toss there. Ooh, Kraft, he's showing off the arm right there. Check this out. Gavin Weir, he's making it clear that he is here. My guy is blowing the fastball. Bye, guys. He's also got the slider. Such good movement on all of his pitches. Look at this one slowed down. You see the rotation out in front. He's getting so many swing and misses. The kid has been dominant. Gavin Weir doing his thing. Check out what he has done between the regionals in the Midwest, where South Dakota came out of as the runner-up, and then so far today. Just absolutely ridiculous. His manager, Mike Gore, said, said he's the best pitcher I've ever seen at 12 years old. And Mike Gore said played college ball. <laughs> I mean, you, you just get one look at the kid. He, the first inning, he's popping the glove. And I'm hearing it all the way up here. I got the headset on there. I could hear the action down there, the glove. I saw the smoke coming off of <laughs> Riley's glove earlier. And then you started rhyming. <laughs> Don't challenge me in a rap battle. I think we could find some player on these <laughs> 16 teams who wants in. Better here, Aiden LaBeouf, second baseman for Louisiana. Good take by him. Yeah, that's another thing too, is as a hitter, it's, it's tough to decipher which pitches to take sometimes because you're thinking, okay, I gotta get going early with my swing. 
And you got to worry about the slider. That's the thing. Once you get committed early, then it's too late to pull it back for the slider. And that's why we get so many swing and misses. Fifth strikeout today. That ball's way out in the outer half of the zone. That might be might even be a ball in the right hander's batter's box. And it's just so tough because it gets on you so quick. And again, this is the conversion, roughly speaking. 70 miles an hour at this level from this distance equates to over 90 in the big leagues at that level. And then if you're around 75, which Gavin Weir has been, it's upper 90s in the majors. That is what we call in Spanish fuego. 46 feet, the distance to pitch from here. We've got a couple of swords this inning. Batter Dylan Menard here. The diminutive left fielder for Louisiana who was kind enough to go back to back with Isaac Boudreau, the six footer pregame for us. And you mentioned the sw swords. You get those half swings when it's tough to pick out what pitch it is out of the hand. You know, you're saying, yes, I'm going to swing at this thing, get it going early, because he's throwing a hard fastball. You get the hands committed too early, and then you see the slider at the last second. It's hard to hold up, and you take almost that half swing, like you said, a sword. Wow. And then you paint a backdoor slider. Let's see the number six strikeout today. It's almost like he's getting stronger throughout the course of this game. Just attacking the zone. His manager said, I'm really interested to see what he looks like five to seven years from now as he keeps growing and keeps ascending and keeps pumping the petroleum. All I say is let the young kid be young, man. Let him grow up, have a good time doing this. He's facing Sawyer Watkins, who is the only guy for Louisiana to reach base off Gavin Weir. Sawyer stood in there, and he battled, and he worked the walk. Yeah, you can tell Sawyer has a good idea of the strike zone. He knows what he wants to hit, knows what he wants to take. Two and two. Two two from Weir. Oh, he wanted that. And man, Riley wanted that one. They both started walking off. Get another look at this one. This thing stays outside there. And then he comes back with heat. Strikes out the side in the third. He has struck out four in a row and seven through three innings today. If you love this game, this is one of the great days of the year. Those kids will never forget that the rest of their lives. Players take a trip down memory lane just a bit. For me, I always wanted to come here. I never got to come here. Cool experience. And to be a part of these kids' memories forever is going to be really special for us. Angels, Indians coming in the MLB Little League Classic right here in Williamsport, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN on Sunday. And you know all the kids are going to want to meet this guy, Shohei Otani. Oh, Shohei Otani. I might be running up to him before the kids do, but we do know he's going to be swarmed over here. Such a favorite by so many of the kids. When you ask them who their favorite player is, a lot of Shohei Otani. You were out there at the All-Star Game in Colorado, and it was a spectacle for Otani out there amid big leaguers. It really was. It, it's crazy. I, I, I had a friend out there as well with me, and he mentioned how there was just a wave always just following Otani, and he got caught up in the wave. He wasn't even trying to necessarily go toward Otani, but the wave just took him that way. Noah Kenzie rolls one to short, and Landon Crafts. He's got a bazooka. We saw it earlier, and there's one down. Well, he's a name that pops up so much when these players answer who is their favorite player. We ask them so many questions. Mike Trout, Shohei Otani, the Angels are running away with that one. A ton of Adam Sandler as well. Wow. You see the favorite singer? We got Drake, ACDC, and my favorite category, the food, baby. Steak and burgers. 
I love it. No shrimp galleta on there. That was the KP winner. We got a new hitter here in this South Dakota lineup. This is another one of their flamethrowers, a right-hander, Maddox Munson. Mad Dog comes off the bench to bat here. He's down nothing to two against Nick Brown of Louisiana, who's pitching pretty darn well himself. Yeah, I was going to say, we have to give Nick Brown his credit because he's mixing in the off-speed pitch just as well. We saw how far out in front Mad Dog was on that one. But Brown has done a great job of using his de using his defense as well. Check swing. No swing. We're talking about food. And Nick Brown apparently is an expert with the grilled cheese. Mm. He says the perfect Nick Brown grilled cheese. Your cheese, your bread, and your sriracha. Ooh. Little hot sauce on that thing. Nick Brown just put on that slider, put the little hot sauce on that last pitch there for that strikeout, fifth strikeout for him today. He's got a nice job working through this lineup since the first inning. Look how far out in front that swing is. That just tells you how dirty that pitch is from Brown. Man, that's a good hook right there. He dreams of being a big leaguer someday, and he gets ahead here. With two outs, with strike one to Brayson Fox. He's also really good at chess, Nick Brown. I'm more of a checkers guy <laughs> myself. I'll take a neither on that one. <laughs> There's a strike. Brown's got two of them. Maybe tic tac toe. Keep it simple for me. Hopscotch. Those are the parents for Nick Brown. Frank and Stephanie looking on. And his son, their son, Dylan. How about Nick Brown? We got a heck of a pitcher's duel going on here in Williamsport. Welcome back to the Little League World Series on ESPN. We got South Dakota leading Louisiana 1-0 as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Now, you know these kids are 10, 11, 12 years old. Yeah, they love baseball, but they got other interests as well. No other interest, though, as interesting as the catcher for this team from Lafayette Sawyer Watkins, who has great hands. I asked his dad, uh, how come he's got such great hands? He said, well, he's a professional frog catcher. Actually, this kid has quite some fame back in Louisiana as a frog catcher. You see him there doing it with a fishing pole, but he also does it uh, with his hands. Now, the pastime is called neighborhood frogging. I'm sure you guys are all very familiar with this. You bop around neighborhood to neighborhood. You're grabbing uh, frogs out of the dish, and whatever you catch, you can eat that later that night. So there we have it. How do you get some quick hands behind the plate? You just go for some neighborhood frogging. Never done it, X. Mike. I've never done. Look how big those frogs are. My, those frogs are bigger than my man. Sebastian, were you familiar with that term before that? Around any type of uh, frogging, uh, you guys know me. I'm the I'm the city boy here, so I don't know anything about neighborhood frogging or city frogging or any type of frogging really, other than frogger. How about, uh, how about fish? Uh, you had a report on fish yesterday, right? And I think we uh, we might need an amendment to that. You know what's tough here is that I, I love I, I need to know if those ones are edible. Like, are, are they cooking those ones? Are you getting frog legs? The fish or the frogs? That, either one. Well, we will chat with Sawyer, and we will figure that out. You guys know I, I love fish, right? I mean, this... This 29-inch waist doesn't happen overnight. That's not that's not a coincidence. That's a lot of fish. So I was kind of embarrassed. I didn't know that bluegill was so popular. But the parents from Nebraska said it's, you know, it wasn't something to eat. Then apparently Twitter had to have their word. Everybody eats bluegill now. I, I didn't know this. So uh, we'll definitely hopefully maybe get some up in the trailer here for lunch or maybe for dinner. We have set the record straight. You can't eat bluegill. 
Big J journalism here at the Little League World Series. Landon Granger was the first batter here for Louisiana in the bottom of the fourth, and now Landon Kraft again facing Gavin Weir. And he's got another strikeout. This kid's incredible. There's some stuff that this kid has. And he's just so consistent with it. At this age, a lot of times you don't see the consistency of throwing that nasty pitch for a strike every time. Look at that slider down in the zone. He knows exactly where he wants to throw and he's placing it right there. But for Louisiana, all it takes is one swing. We know that. And if he, Gavin's supplying the power, you connect on one of these things, that ball will go. He has struck out six in a row. You saw he has nine total and his 0-2. Is strike three called? This guy is a monster. He's just doing it over and over again. We've seen it. The command that he has, but the nastiness, that's what it is. Let's go. He's nasty. Let's go. Let's go right now. Right now. Welcome back to the Little League World Series on ESPN presented by T-Mobile. Hey, Little League Sandlot Fun Days. It's a player-led, unstructured opportunity for local Little League programs to provide a fun, relaxed activity for baseball and softball players where kids make the rules, they make the lineups, they make the calls. So you just give them the bats, the balls in the field and let them play and eat as well. Learn more today at littleleague.org slash Sandlot Fun Days. Fill your face here in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Yes. What is that right there? Was that like a like a snow cone type thing? Yeah, I think we got some Italian ice working. Give me that. He's focused on that thing. We've got a one nothing game. South Dakota leading Louisiana. Sioux Falls and Lafayette, whose starting pitcher Nick Brown has been really good as well. He gave up just the one run in that top of the first. And he's facing 7-8-9 here for South Dakota, starting with Opland Sonicson. That's a nasty back foot slider right there. But the one thing about Brown is he's been so composed too. You can tell he doesn't show much emotion. He just gets the ball back, rears back and fires. Does a nice job with his off speed as well. And he strikes out his seventh batter today. There's one gone in the fifth. He has seven Ks of his own. I'm talking about somebody that's mowing them down just as well. You see the slow down here on that catches the outer half of the plate a little bit up in the zone but does such a nice job of painting over there. Brings up a pinch hitter again Kai Carlson plays some outfield for South Dakota taking strike one. His superstition he wears his good luck pepperoni boxers. He likes his breakfast burritos. I saw that as well. That's something I enjoy. When I was 11, 12, Pops used to make the breakfast burritos before heading out to a game. Sometimes he would put them, you know, we, he, I would eat one before the game, and then he would put one in the microwave and wrap it up in the foil. That way, if I had a double header, I could eat one in the middle of the That's games. Awesome. Shout out to Pops. Carlson rolls it back to Brown. Takes care of it. There's two down, and Brown has set down six straight. All right, so with how good these guys are going, and in a one nothing game, you got to start thinking about the pitch limits. The max you see, 85 for this age group. Everyone here is 11 or 12. But then you also have to think about days of rest also. Yeah, absolutely. you got to be smart about it, especially navigating this whole tournament. you got to figure out which guys you know, match up best with which teams, too. And how far do you want them to go? You know, and I think that's always got to come into play, especially in a manager's mind, trying to figure out how he's going to go about this tournament. But give it to Brown for keeping his team in this game. It's still a one-run game. 
all they have to do is get the bats and find a way to put a run up on the board just to tie it up. Obviously, easier said than done, but still keeping this thing close, that's huge for them. And Brown is facing Alex McKinney, you saw, and Brown's 1-2. Gets a roller to third, Cole Schecksneider with a fine pick, and a 1-2-3 fifth for Nick Brown. The lefty from Louisiana, seven in a row. He's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Gavin Weir. series a stage that you just dream about as a youngster we got two pitchers dealing the energy is so high right now on both sides and I think it's because you know being a one-run game and seeing how good these pitchers are doing you know all it takes is one or two hits to turn this thing right around so the pitching has been dominant Nick Brown for Louisiana he is through Five innings of one run ball, but this man, Gavin Weir, has not given up a hit. Out of the regionals, he had a perfect game and a no hitter. He's got a no hitter through four so far. He was just one ball from an immaculate inning his last time out in the fourth. He's facing Andrew Gidry, a pinch hitter here for Louisiana out of Lafayette. And Gidry's behind nothing in two. Gavin and, and Riley working so well together as a battery. They're on the same page. Gavin Weir gets the ball, rares back, fires. He's got a great pace going. It's excellent to watch. You see the 10 strikeouts. The last seven batters, all strikeouts against Weir. Make it eight. Let's go to Sebastian with today's family interview, brought to you by Greenlight. We got Gavin Weir's dad, Ronnie, brother Drew here with me. All right, so I noticed that you, dad, hey, you never sit down, but you're moving up and down the bleachers all the time. Is that nerves or what's going on? Yeah, just nerves, just wanting to see every pitch and wanting to just kind of focus on what he's doing. So um, it's just getting up and down. It's hard for me to sit still, so. I get the nerves, but I mean, he's been, he's been cruising. Has he always been this dominant? Uh, I mean, he's always been a good pitcher. He just loves the moment and loves working for his teammates and wants to be the best he can out there for, for his team and everybody around him. So. Now, before the game, he told us, you got to keep the main thing the main thing. What does that actually mean? Um, it means, you know, the whole team goal. Uh, we came here to, to win games and came here, you know, the goal was to get here and then, then we came here to win, and that's what we're here to do. So, so just keeping all the distractions away and just focused on what the team can do and what he can help the team do to win. And I know you were telling me you've been coaching him your whole life. You've always been in the dugout with him. But this is the first time that you're not on the field with him. You're not on the dugout. How's that experience been? Um, it's nerve-wracking <laughs> being a parent instead of a coach. So you have a lot more to think about when you're coaching instead of uh, um, as a parent. So there's so many things going on in there. You don't have time to be quite as nervous. So, so it's been different, but I love it, and it's helped Gavin grow as well. So. All right, let me get Brother Drew in here. What's it like watching your brother pitch here in a Little League World Series and get a strikeout right there? It's really cool. It's really awesome to see him pitch and have fun and hang out with his buddies here over here on the field. Awesome to be here with the Weir family. We send it back up to you, boys. That's awesome. And from Ronnie, the father, as you heard, he's a coach, a pretty humble way of saying, yeah, I think he's been pretty good for a while. Yeah, all, all I know is keeping the main thing the main thing, that's what you got to do because he's out there doing it Strikeout after strikeout after strikeout, and we see it. 12 Ks, no hitter through four and two thirds. Well, Oliver Dean had been the pinch hitter before. He struck out, and now Garrett Begno almost tucked one down the line. Yeah, he's going up there being aggressive. Begno is. He's not looking to wait around. He's looking to try to put something in play, get his team going, be a catalyst somehow. 
Again, if you're wondering too about the strike zone at this level, we have to remind you it's between the batter's armpits and the top of the knees when the batter assumes a natural stance. Begno trying to tinker with the timing of Gavin Weirs. 2-1. It's cut on and miss. And you got to find a way to do something, right? Try to mess up the rhythm, call a timeout, take a breath. You got to do something. That's the 20th swing and miss today off of Gavin. That's ridiculous. And that's 21 for strikeout number 13. He has struck out 10 batters in a row, and he is one inning away from a no hitter in Williamsport. Come on, got to get a run right now. Let's go. The Little League World Series on ESPN is presented by T-Mobile, the leader in 5G. Welcome back to Williamsport Friday night at the Little League World Series. Hey, our first NFL preseason game has the Chiefs and the Cardinals tonight, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN. ESPN Deportes and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, Lewis Riddick with the call. Lisa Salters down on the field. And our coverage starts top of the hour with a special edition of Monday Night Countdown. Alongside Xavier Scruggs and with Sebastian Salazar roaming the stands, Mike Monaco with our entire crew behind the scenes as we start the sixth inning in a one nothing game, X. You talk about being on the verge of, of something amazing happening. We already see the no-hitter with Gavin Weir through five, but a one-run game and anything can happen at this point. You heard his coaching staff as South Dakota came off the field. Need another run. They want to add more here, knowing that it's a really good Lafayette, Louisiana team. And they're going to come up in the bottom of the sixth. Brecken Beitler is the batter against Nick Brown, who's been nails for Louisiana as well. And Nick's dad was pretty juiced the last inning that Nick was out on the ball. And Beitler pulls this one in the left in front of Menard. Second hit for Beitler out of the leadoff spot for South Dakota. Yeah, that second hit is a big one there as they need to get another run across this board, give them a little more cushion. We see the leg kick, we see the foot go up in the cleat, gets the foot down, barrel extends, drops it into the left field for a knock. His manager told us, Brecken knows where the cameras are. He's going to celebrate after a good play, and he's been asking his team, hey, when can I talk to ESPN? <laughs> Get my man some TV time. The camera's going to find him here as he bolts down to second and then dove back to the bag. Nice job of Beitler by getting himself to scoring position here. See him, he rounds the bag there. Luckily gets his hand back in there for the dive, but that's one of those ones you don't want to round there because you never know if you're getting thrown behind right there from the catcher. And it was a pretty good throw by the frogman, Sawyer Watkins. One one pitch to Boston Bryant. Boy, Brown is located so well in this one. Yeah, Watkins does a really nice job of freeze framing that pitch right there. Does a nice job of receiving back there. This will get the runner over. Aiden LaBeouf retires Bryant for the first out at the top of the sixth. And that's what we call doing a job by Bryant, getting the runner over. That is an amazing piece of hitting right there. Great job, Boston. And you hear it, an amazing piece of hitting right there, getting the runner over. You got a runner on third, less than two outs, makes the job that much easier for the next hitter coming up in Gavin Weir. Who you might have heard is having a pretty good night on the bump. He's in the box here for the third time. Well, he's got a no hitter in progress. Rolls it to second. 
to get Beitler home and get him some insurance. And I'm a little surprised here because I thought Louisiana would have been playing in up the middle as well. They played in on the corners, but on, they've got to cut down the run because they haven't even been able to get one run off of Gavin. So you see second baseman there and the buff is playing back. A lot of times, six inning, you got those guys coming in. You got to cut down that run right there. And credit Weir and the guy who came before him, Bryant, knowing the situation. Exactly. It's a nice job of just, you know, this one that we call manufacturing a run right there. Just get them over, get them in. Now Noah Kenzie against Brown. Now I would understand if Louisiana was playing corners in middle back if it was a, a like a big run scoring game, but neither teams have been able to scratch many runs, right? Totally. Nail biting time <laughs> for that guy, Gavin Weir. Nice job of Brown just continuing to attack the strike zone. I mean, you think about it, any other team, two runs, that doesn't seem like a lot to at least tie up the game. But again, what Gavin Weir has done on the other side, not giving up anything. Two runs is going to be hard to press, press across. A hit is going to be hard to press across. One, two. Again, you go back to the start of the district tournament for Gavin Weir. He's now thrown more than 500 pitches. Districts, states, regionals, now Williamsport. He's given up one hit. And you talk about breezing through the summer. See you guys when school starts. <laughs> His pregame interview with Sebastian, I was about ready for Gavin to give us a talk about practice. <laughs> Sebastian asked him about practice. You don't need too much of it. Roll to the hole. Craft. Oh, what a pick on the back end of that by Boudreau. Oh, Louisiana, they can pick it, X. Yeah, that's a great play by Craft. Goes deep in the hole here. Shortstop ranges to his left. To his right, I'm sorry. Picks it up. A nice strong throw to first base. Big out right there. All right, we are not in the bottom of the sixth inning. The top of the sixth will continue. It just went to review on that bang bang play at first that we thought ended the top of the sixth. Here's another look. See that right foot of the first baseman, Isaac Boudreaux, and it is separated from the bank. Yes, that's the perfect angle right there, and you see his foot just comes off. Just enough. Noah Kenzie had his eyes on it as well. And he will get run for here. He's got to be playing way in, right? So he's got two, I mean, we're on the horse regardless. If he hits it, we're gone. That is Kai Carlson in the run at first. And as you heard, the instructions ready to pull. So Carlson running, South Dakota still hitting, leading to nothing. And now Kaysen Mediger takes strike one from Nick Brown. I mean, you can't forget how good Brown has been, too. Yeah, and it, 
the ability to have to go back in the dugout and then come back on the field, throw two immediate strikes, that just tells you about the maturity level of him getting back and focused. And making quick work. And that's how it's done right there. I mean, just get right back to work, get out there on the mound, don't let it phase you. Brown's doing just a great job out there for his team. Keep his team in this thing. I got to show you guys what my guy Kevin Weir has been doing all day today. Check out the slider here. That thing has so much movement, but then the heat as well, and he throws so many strikes. He's got a no-hitter going right now through five and he's made it look so easy. If he didn't give up a walk at the, for the very first batter, he'd have a perfect game going. He's been magnificent, and he's been this way all summer. What he did in the regionals, where he threw both a perfect game and an additional no-hitter, where the only thing separating him from two perfect games was one error out there. Nothing was hit out of the infield in the regionals, and now he comes here to Williamsport, his debut, and all he has done is strike out the last 10 batters that he has faced here at Volunteer Stadium. And that's saying a lot, making easy work of the Louisiana team. We know how strong their bats can be, but he has just absolutely silenced them. All right, we'll set up pitch count as well. You see it's at 74. The limit is 85 for someone Gavin's age. Now, if he starts an AB at 84, say, he can finish that for as long as that at bat goes. He's facing Aiden LaBeouf and starting with ball one. Gavin's been playing two years up at the U14 level but he's been dominating with his fellow 12-year-olds and the 11-year-olds on this Sioux Falls, South Dakota team. And this is probably one of those situations, if you're Louisiana, you're looking to take until you get a strike. Trying to get base runners on. Three straight out of the zone to LaBeouf. Three zero. -oh. Four-pitch walk to LaBeouf. Greenlight is more than a debit card. It's a time saver, a teacher, a safety net. It's how millions of kids and teens learn about money every day and invest for the long term. Greenlight, it's the money app for families. So Gavin Weir, it turns out, is at least somewhat human. 10 straight strikeouts, and he issues that walk here in the sixth. It's really, really fun, okay? Hey, we're fine, we're good, all right? Everything's good, okay? Gav, Gav, enjoy yourself, okay? Be the man on the mound, enjoy yourself, don't worry about anything. Hey, you're getting a little quick on the arm here, okay? You're opening it up a little bit quick, relax, take a couple deep breaths, get down to business. Okay, three outs, here we go, boys, hey. Hey, turn two right here, let's go. Okay. Again, Mike Gorsett played college baseball, the manager of this team. He said leading into this, Gavin Weir is the best pitcher I've ever seen at 12 years old. We've seen people tweeting tonight that Gavin Weir is a future Cy Young winner. He's already getting the pitching ninja treatment just a few minutes ago. You he starts know, with ball walk. You know you got something special. You get the pitching ninja treatment. Yes. That's for sure. Now, flip side of this, Tying run at the plate for Louisiana. There's a strike. And so the pitch count is at 80 for Weir facing Menard. It's a good take by Menard being patient. Trying to find a way to get on base. Two and two at 82 pitches. And Weir deals. And Menard stays alive. Every pitch is precious. Menard doing a nice job of fighting right there. Trying to work the count a little bit. You see the pitch count climbing up 83 now. 
2 2. It's a strikeout for Weir. He's got 14. Weir just went right back to the bread and butter. Fastball up in the zone. That is pure Petro. That is heat. Again, the pitch limit is 85 pitches per day. You can finish the A-B. Strike one to Sawyer Watkins. Sawyer Watkins taking the first pitch there, got a strike. Now he'll be looking to hack. The last batter that Weir can face misses out of the zone. He could still get a double play ball for a no-no. And you can see the reaction of his defenders behind him. Every pitch, they're on edge. A strikeout for Weir. 15 of them in five and two-thirds. No hit innings in Williamsport. Look at me, I'm so proud of you. Way to carry this team, that a boy. Hey, go play center field now, make a play and end this thing. Here we go. Great job. Brackett, hey, Gunner, you're going to second. Brackett, you're staying there. Hey, three ball, you made for this. Magical stuff from Gavin Weir. Take a bow, kid, you were spectacular. Simply unreal what Gavin Weir did coming to this venue on this stage and five and two thirds, no hit innings capped with strikeout number 15. Yeah, it's almost unbelievable what we just saw. He put together the most prolific pitching performance I've seen in a long time. Five and two thirds innings, 15 Ks, no hits, no runs and only two walks. My man was carving. And now he gives way to Kaysen Mediger. We'll try to make it a combined no-no. And just a quick note, Little League has had pitch count regulations since 06. Before that, it was innings back when you and I were playing Little League and so many others. Well, this guy, Nick Brown, for Louisiana, represents the tying run for Lafayette. He's in a one ball, one strike count. And a good take by Brown. Yeah, you think about what he's done for Louisiana to keep them in this game. Now he's got an opportunity to help his team here keep it going, keep the line moving. Fouls that one off. Just a little late on that one there. It's a good cut though. Even with two strikes here, I'm still looking to do damage. If I get something in the gap, that's a big knock. If I get something up, put it over the fence, I tie it up. Full count. Now this is the tougher situation here. Three, two, you want to be patient enough to get on base, but you don't want to miss a mistake. Three, two. Strike three, call! It's a combined no-hitter for South Dakota! And we see the emotion we see the celebration. What a way to start for South Dakota. Hey, hey, that ball doesn't go anywhere. To know we're going to see this team continue to play more. And they're just getting started. Look at this group right here, Mike. They know they just did something special. You heard them say that ball's not going anywhere. 
They're going to hang on to that and treasure this moment at the Little League World Series. Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Sioux Falls Little League. They were at the Little League World Series in 2017, but this today is their first win here. And that man, Gavin Weir, was simply magical on this Friday night. I mean, what he did was explainable. The way that this kid was commanding all of his pitches, knowing that getting the two strikes, he knows how to put guys away. It almost like he was fooling with the hitters with some of his stuff, keeping them off balance. What a special performance by this young kid in South Dakota. Early this morning, you watched some highlights of Gavin Weir. And the first thing you said, X, was Chris Sale. That's what you saw in this lefty at 12 years old. Yeah, it reminded me of nightmares. That's exactly <laughs> what it did. So proud. No one gave us a shot to win that so game. So special. Right? That was supposed to be the best team here. Gavin Weir, you're a special kid. You know that? Okay? Great job, Gavin. Listen, listen. It's the small things. Get a guy on, Brecken. Okay? Get a guy on. Hey, Boston, I know that's not what you wanted, but you did the job. You got him over. Right? Gavin, you put the ball in play. That's winning baseball right there. Defensively, we were lights out. Easton Riley, great job behind the plate. Okay? All around, nonstop. That is South Dakota baseball right there.